Which Pokemon haunt your nightmares? Welcome back, my fellow gamers. This is Top 10 Gaming, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Today, we're going to be letting some Pokemon experiences spook us as we count down the top 10 haunted Pokemon creepypastas filled with ghosts, or at least haunted consoles and cartridges. All right, let's get counting. Number 10, no turning back. This had to have been some kind of weird bootleg version of the game, right? In this version of Pokemon Blue, I played as normal, except I could never turn back. And as I moved forward, everything became more distorted from reality. Every time I tried to turn around, the screen would get all wavy and bubbles would float across it. I'd faint and then reawaken just where I'd been. You'll drown if you go back, a title card on the screen warned, and yet moving forward only made the game get weirder and exposed me to despicable horrors. Pokemon I'd never seen before that appeared to be wounded or falling apart or horrifically mashed together in some way. Around every corner was new horror, but there was no turning back. Number 9. Pokemon Poison This is a story that happened to a friend of mine. My friend Heather was a collector of Pokemon bootlegs and EXEs. The creepier they were, the more she enjoyed them, until she played Pokemon Poison. That was a version that swore her off collecting these games, and she told me it's a game that takes the idea way too far. In the game, you play as a Pokemon trainer whose only goal is to poison as many people in Pokemon as possible. You are forced to custom make your own potions and poisons, but even if you just want to try and ignore this part of the game, it won't let you. When she decided to only make health potions, they all became corrupted and turned into poison that caused her Pokemon to die. Number 8. Where's Dad? This creepypasta begins like this. I have always been a really big red fanboy in Pokemon, and I ended up buying a secondary Pokemon red game online on eBay just so I could play through two games at once without having to worry about anything happening on my previous game with my pristine game save file. I noticed instantly upon receiving the cartridge that it looked different. The sticker didn't quite match up, the cartridge almost looked like it was made of a cheaper, almost translucent plastic by comparison. It was either a bootleg or it was manufactured somewhere very different from my original game. Still, I gave it a shot. Being a huge Red fan, one of my favorite parts of the game is when you examine the SNES in the Celadon department store and Red says, Dad would like this. But in this game, instead, Red said, where is dad? I hadn't experienced anything weird in game until this moment. Nothing creepy, no Lavender Town music driving me insane, no ghost Pokemon crying blood, but this for some reason really bothered me. When I left the department store, I saw a shadowy figure waiting for me outside. When I went to talk to him, his name was ZD. He only spoke in ellipses, three dots. But talking to him initiated a trainer fight, except we didn't have any Pokemon in front of us. My only attack was dad. I used that and lunging out of the shadows, I saw a figure, a full on corpse, rotting zombie. ZD, who I was fighting, stood for zombie dad and his attack was eat. And before we move on to this next point, if you are enjoying these creepy pastas, these creepy stories with me, be sure to show us that you're having fun and give this video a thumbs up. Number seven, augmented reality. John used to love playing Pokemon Go. He'd play it every day on his way to work and every day on his way home. He even bought a separate phone just for playing at one point. With this new phone, he always had the AR experience on. He just thought it was so neat to see the Pokemon in his real life world. That is until one day when a Pokemon seemingly jumped from the game into his real life. As he lowered his phone, the Bulbasaur seemed to blend into reality. It snapped at a nearby rider on the streetcar, and he leaped in their path to protect them, accidentally falling over into them as the streetcar lurched to a stop. Excuse me, the disgruntled rider exclaimed in anger. I, I was just the Pokemon, John stammered, gesturing down towards it, but the person didn't see it. Much of his life continued in this downward spiral, with the Bulbasaur remaining unseen by anyone else except for John, and continuing to ruin his life, causing him eventually to lose his job, his family, his home, and ultimately, in the end, 
his life as well. Number six, Pokemon Creepy Black. This creepypasta tells the story of a character who loves to collect bootlegged versions of Pokemon. They have been playing for years and enjoy seeing what kind of fan altered games they can find and enjoy. One day they come across a game referred to as Pokemon Black. This bootleg version of the game introduced the player to Ghost. Ghost is a Pokemon who only has one attack called Curse. In Pokemon Black, the player watches as other trainers and Pokemon appear to vanish when exposed to Curse, implying perhaps that they have passed on as a result of them being exposed to Ghost's attack. No matter which way the player approaches the game strategically, it always seems to end with a one-on-one -on -one battle after the end of the game, with the player's character becoming an elderly old man who is then forced to fight against and ultimately lose to Ghost in the end. They have one attack that they can use in their defense, which does no damage to their longtime Pokemon and now opponent, Struggle. Number five, From Within. This is a true story, one that warns of what can happen when the line between fantasy and reality begins to blur, when you become so invested in games that they become like real life. Isaiah played Pokemon more than he did anything else. Whether he was at school, at work, he would find ways to play. He preferred baths to showers, actually, because it freed up his hands to play while washing. He was obsessed, to say the least. Isaiah had always wished that he could live life as though he were a real trainer. It was one day when he was in the bath playing Pokemon Red that he got more than he had bargained for when it came to that wish. He was trying to catch a Gengar, but during his attempt, a cutscene he'd never seen before started up and was triggered. The Gengar he saw in front of him looked hyper-realistic, more realistic than his console should have even been able to show. Do you truly wish to become the best trainer? The Gengar somehow asked him. He selected the option, yes, but the Gengar demanded he speak aloud his answer. Yes, he cried out. The Gengar then seemed to leap forward toward him and then emerged from the screen. It grabbed his face in both hands and pulled him through the screen. And the game console splashed down into the bath. Zaya was gone, but the game continued. Number four, Nightmare Attack. This was an attack I noticed my Kadabra had one day while playing in a game. Not sure if it was an error or a glitch or exactly where it came from. I just know that this happened to me and I don't know why. When used, Nightmare would cause no harm to the Pokemon, but after the battle I noticed the trainers were different. They would pass out near the end of battle, either when I was about to lose or run or just upon victory even. They would faint and then when I left and tried to wake them up, I would get this creepy flash of them smiling and foaming at the mouth, like uh, some kind of jump scare card. This glitch or error, I don't know what it was, was so bad that I found myself unable to play my game or any Pokemon games anymore without thinking about it. It's not only haunted my own nightmares, but constantly haunts me when I think of the franchise. Has anyone else had this Kadabra attack or knows where it comes from? Number three, the mystery door. I had never been to this place. It was a department store that somehow appeared in a cave when I was playing Pokemon Red. I didn't know how it got there or where it came from, but I was curious. I went inside. There was a shop owner who looked normal as well as some items for purchase. At the back of the store was a door, but when I approached it, the shop owner stopped and asked me, do you wish to open the mystery door? My only option for responses was no, to which he'd respond, okay, if you change your mind, let me know. We can always talk about the cost to do so. I left the store, but every time I played would end up visiting it again during my session. It was such a weird place. The options for my answer always seemed to be the same, until one day they weren't. I noticed a second option. There was no, and then just an ellipsis for another response. I chose the three little dots, to which the shop owner didn't respond. I was given another chance to choose between the same two. This repeated a few times until I saw my character shudder and begin to vomit. Out of my insides emerged a tall, spindly creature shrouded in mist with bright red glowing eyes. It stood tall with a twisted grin. Time to pay the price, it said. I heard the echo of its voice in my mind. 
Number two, Barry Forest. One time while I was in Barry Forest, I ran into a random girl there. Nothing too bad happened, but it was definitely a really creepy encounter. She asked me to come with her and become one with the forest. Then I watched her move into a tree. Cut into the tree was a perfect shape for her body. You don't need to leave ever if you join us, she told me. Number one, trading places. My friend had loaned me their old Game Boy Color as my Switch had broken down recently but it was covered by a warranty still, so I was just waiting to get it back, fully repaired. I used to love playing my Game Boy Color when I was younger. They gave me a few games along with it. Among them was a Barbie Genie game, a Legend of Zelda game, but I settled on a Pokemon game to play. However, the cartridge didn't look like any Pokemon game that I remembered. It had a picture of an intense looking Ditto on the front. Weirdly enough, the color of the Ditto was off and seemed to more match the color of the Game Boy instead. I paid it no mind, thinking that with age, maybe the color had changed or maybe the cartridge was a little dirty. I popped the cartridge in and booted up the handheld console. Suddenly, I noticed it began to shift in my hands. I watched as the Game Boy appeared to melt out of my hands before emitting a bright, blinding white light. I shielded my eyes and turned away, and when I opened them, I noticed before me stood a giant ditto, but shaped like me. Its face was wrong, but as it looked down at me, it appeared to fix that, matching my very own expression. Its skin was a little more pink than mine, but otherwise it was a perfect copy. The ditto reached down and picked me up. I noticed that I couldn't move. I didn't have arms or legs. I noticed a border as well in my vision. Finally free, it said, my own face smiling down at me. What did you think of these creepypastas? Which Pokemon stories do you find the most frightening? What scares you the most? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Gaming, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, saying thank you so much for watching and reminding you to keep on gaming on. Pew pew!